All right guys, so I cut out all of my pieces and I actually altered the skirt, which I will show you in a minute, but I'm going over the directions. Um, I realized yesterday I didn't have interfacing, so I grabbed that today. And I just try to go through the directions first and see what seams I need to finish first and like when I should finish them. So I just read through these and just kind of figured, so I saw this right here and it shows how the seams are going to go. So any of the seams that are going to be like together, like the side back seams and then the, um, cent not the center front, but like the princess line seams, I will serge those after I sew the two pieces together. But then these ones that are open, I want to make sure I serge those before. So I'm going to like lay out my pieces and figure that out real quick. I laid out the bodice pieces to replicate this. Oh, this one. To replicate this, what it looks like on here. And then I just put pins on the four raw edges that I need to serge first before sewing all of like the seams together because the other seams will be finished after the regular sides or the regular seams are done. So I'm going to go ahead and serge and then just follow the directions and sewing the rest. So I'll first do this piece, which would be these two together on both sides. And then I would sew the back on and then the side seams. So the side seams are the only ones that you should serge before sewing them together because those will lay flat whereas everything else will um, be pushed like these will be going oh, well, that's kind of weird actually um so the directions show these seams are going to the front i think yeah that's strange usually you push all um seams to the back um but in the directions it shows like even the front ones going towards the center so I don't know. I'll just follow the directions and see where I get with it. But yeah, I'm going to serge and sew and take you guys along with me. Okay, so here I am at this point. I have the whole like front bodice done and I surged everything, everything looks good. And then I also decided to top stitch. So I did that on the like front bodice on both sides and then on the back panel I surged. And this is the band that goes around the top. So it'll, where is it? It's like this part. So I did that. I didn't do the facing one yet because I have to put interfacing on it and I don't feel like cutting it. So I did that one, which is part of the next step. And now I'm going to work on the straps. So I just have to like fold it, I guess in half, sew it and then turn it right side out. And then I'm gonna like sandwich everything. So I'm gonna have to cut the interfacing soon for the facing one, but I just wanna get everything else done first. So I'm just pinning this band to the bodice and it's actually too big. So I measured this out. It's about an inch too long, um, which is weird because like I matched everything up. So I'm going to have to add another half inch to the side seams on both sides to make like that inch go away. So I'll just have to like pick this apart and then move this over another half an inch including like the whatever it is now so that's annoying and i don't think my fabric like stretched too much because this was actually like too small so instead of it reaching the top i just kind of like curved it a little below and i did that on the other side so that's annoying that i have to pick it apart but i'll do that and i'll show you what it looks like well i figured out what my problem was i put the band on upside down so now I have to take everything out again and repin it at the right spot. <laughs> hey, Valma. 
So I repinned it on the correct side. This was the side that I pinned to the top of the bodice the first time. So now I'm just going to sew the correct side to the bodice. Uh, I always do something like that. So now I have to attach my straps right here. So I have my and my band piecings. So I just like to line it up and then I like kind of poke a hole through the points and just make a mark. So I'll show you what that looks like. So these are the marks I made and I just kind of like poked holes. So now I just need to line this up and pin. Another way you can do it is lining up the piece, the pattern piece on top and then I have the strap underneath and I just moved it over to match up with the notches. So I have some of my pieces laid out and I didn't cut the seam allowance off of these because I just want to cut them out really quick. This one I had to cut into multiple pieces just so I can save interfacing because this is expensive. So I'm going to press this on and I'll show you how I do that. When you're starting out and you're using interfacing, definitely just cut out the pattern size and don't like cut it like this because it might get a little confusing. And also when you're steaming, so this side, not steaming, um, but this side is pretty much done and then this side is still open. So I'll just show you, I just like to place, I just like to place the iron for like three seconds and then lift it and move it. Don't like move it all around like that and do not use steam because that doesn't work. Um, so I just like to do this all the way down the length of whatever I am putting interfacing on and then I also like to go like this all the way down for like two seconds just to make sure it's secure and then I would just let it like sit for a few seconds and then when you lift it just kind of like air it out I don't know if this does anything but it just helps it not be so hot and gross and then i just kind of like lean mine up against this thing that i have you can put them on like a chair or something but yeah that's like that's like how i like to put my interfacing on these are all my interfaced pieces all done so now i'm going to continue with the next step which is sewing this onto the top of my bodice to create facing Okay, so before I actually pin that and sew it on, I think I'm going to clip some of these areas where there's like side seam or just like these seams because it gets really thick in this seam. So I'm going to clip these, just kind of like clip a square of it out and then I'm going to serge this and press it up. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to clip, serge, press it up, and then I'm going to, I apparently also have to, on this step, I have to fold the bottom of the band up half an inch and then trim it. I don't usually like trimming just yet because I mess it up usually. So I think I'm going to probably just like press it up the half an inch, even though all the seams are five eighths of an inch. So this is just like what I clip. So this is just like what I clipped. It was like right here. And I just kind of cut it out. So I'm just going to do that with the rest of them. And on the top of these, like this one doesn't have one, but on these seams they do. So I'm just going to clip all of those. So I have the facing sewed on and I pressed it up. So now I'm going to fold it over. That's the seam. And then I'm going to pin it. And the front bodice is almost done. 
So this is what the outside looks like. And then the inside, just kind of pinned it and I wanted to make sure that there was overlap of this because I'm gonna be stitching in the ditch. Okay, so yeah, I just took a look at the instructions and I need to pin the regular waistband that doesn't have the interfacing to the right side of the bodice. And then I'm going to attach the interfaced waistband to the inside. So I do like right side of this to the wrong side of the bodice. And then when it's folded down everything, the inside and the outside will have like a waistband and this will be sandwiched in between. So I sewed the skirt side seams together. That was just pretty simple. And now I pinned the skirt to the outer facing and I'm going to sew that together and then probably top stitch or stitch in the ditch again for this one. So this is what she looks like. I pinned the waistband so I can do the stitch in the ditch again. Um, and I think it looks really cute. Um, there's this gap because that's where the placket will go for the buttons. So I'm going to stitch in the ditch. I'll just give you like a 360. What it looks like. And I have stuff everywhere. In this bag, I cover my mannequin in like plastic bags so bugs don't crawl in up in the front. And then the side in the back looks cute but i decided to pin the plackets there's two plackets on here you can see on like both sides um i was like i'm just gonna pin it and see what it looks like because i'm usually whatever i say won't work usually does work and when i whatever i say does work doesn't work I'm just going to pin everything together and then it actually matches up really well and I think the front looks fine. I don't think it's like weird like I thought it would look for some reason. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like. So I'm going to finish it up and I need to sew each of the plackets. Um, what step am I, am I on? I just noticed that this side of the waistband is a lot smaller than this side of the waistband and that's going to drive me insane. Oh my god, I'm so annoyed. But I think when I sew like this on, it'll be covered so it'll look a little bigger. But like, I don't understand, like, I don't understand why one side is so much bigger. That's so annoying. Because I cut everything right. Ugh. Sometimes sewing is really annoying. So I mentioned before that I changed the skirt around a little bit. So I'm going to show you what I did for that. Um, oh, I got the, right, the wrong skirt. So I always, whenever I have my pattern pieces from the original pattern, I trace them. I just cut out the, like, around the biggest size, and then I trace them. I have this, like, tracing paper I got off of Amazon that I use. So I traced both of these, and then this is kind of, like, all splayed and weird looking, but pretend, like, these two pieces right here that connect up there, they are the skirt front, which is this one. And then these two pieces are the skirt side front. So what I did was I first, um, I found out where the seam allowance was on both pieces because these were sewn together. And instead of, so when you put these together like this, usually the skirt would have a dart right there. So I basically transferred that dart to the hemline. So that's what I did first. I just kind of lined up both of the seam lines or the stitching lines or the seam allowance um, and then I had like this big opening so that was like my first kind of adjustment and I was like that's still not enough. Then oh also it looks like looks like these are two different pieces but this is one whole piece right here. Um, so it wasn't enough so then I did the slash and spread method so on each part of like on the side front and the front I just made a slash up both of those and then I spread it so you also when you do this I put it on top of another piece of my tracing paper and I taped the top so it wouldn't like move or anything 
So I already had like this done. So I had to measure from here to here to make sure that this space was the same amount as this space. So they're about four inches. And then I taped it and cut it out. And I did the same exact thing for the back. If you have any questions, if that like didn't make sense or anything, just leave me a comment below and I can explain it a little better. I just finished the buttonholes and oh my god, this one right here was giving me so much trouble. You can kind of see there's like part of a buttonhole in here, but it kept, when I was, I was doing this like the right way, like you would feed it in with the excess on the left, and it would make, like I was starting down here, it would make a buttonhole here. That's not, this is the size that I need. <laughs> So I had to flip it the other way and then I wedged like this paper under my foot because my presser foot was kind of like at an angle but oh my god it's done and I'm almost out of thread but I finished all of the buttonholes thank god. So I just have to cut them open, press this to get this like um, ink off and then sew the buttonholes on, buttonholes, sew the buttons on but I only have nine buttons and uh 10 buttonholes so i don't know why i just didn't do one yeah that was that was smart <laughs> so i finished my dress and this is what it looks like and i have a nice messy room you got it right <laughs> so anyway i finished my dress um a few days ago and it took me a lot longer to finish than i thought it would just because i'm just bad at like managing the time like i think things will take me a shorter amount of time than they actually do so the only few things that i had left were sewing the facing of the plackets doing the buttonholes and then the buttons so it actually didn't take as long as i thought it would um but it still took me like an extra few days to do it um from the pattern you can tell i changed the skirt which i showed you in the video earlier and yeah, it's pretty much the same, which is like a back view. It's just super comfortable. It is a little tight. Um, I did have to take it in, which I wish I took like, like there is ease in here, but I wish I had like a little bit more ease because I don't like things to be skin tight. Like this waistband is like great, but this is my actual waist. I don't like things to be that tight. I don't know if anyone actually does, unless it was stretchy, but this is definitely not stretchy. It's 100% linen. I think it could be a linen blend, um, but the only other different thing I did was for the hem, I just did, um, I serged it and then I just rolled up the quarter inch serge and top stitched it because I didn't want it to be too short and I don't like things that are really like too above my knees because I feel like it makes me look stumpy. So yeah, I didn't really want it to go any higher than this. Um, I liked this length, so that's why I did a smaller um hem but yeah anyway this is what it looks like and i think it came out really good this is the first make that i made in a long time that i'll actually wear although i'm not sure like if i really like these sleeves sleeves these straps anymore because they're kind of annoying and then when i put a cardigan on at work they kind of like make me look like i have these horns coming out of my shoulders because it's like a big bump um but yeah it's cute for like taking pictures and stuff that i will have on my instagram and yeah, I think that's it. So again, this was the pattern. It was McCall's M8091. And I altered the skirt. And that was like pretty much it. And then I also took in the top because these small size is a six. And so my bust is a 31, I believe, with um, my bra on. So that doesn't work with 33. So yeah, um, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button if you like the dress and the video, and if you're into the whole cottagecore vibe, and leave me a comment down below of what your sewing plans are for the fall, or whatever your plans are, because I want to hear them. But yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!